The problem is <laughs> the bottom. Well, it's about 7 in the morning. We're out in the shop today and we're working on Mad Max. We got him in here. It's about minus 30 outside and nice and toasty plus 10 inside. So let's take a look at what's wrong with this tractor and see if we can get her fixed. Those of you with sharp eyes will notice that the tire is a little bit of a tilt in comparison to the back one. This is not special dirt track race mode. This is actually a problem. And so what has happened, it's going to be difficult to see, we'll get things apart, but the kingpin up here that the snuckle spins on, top and bottom, are both broken. The bottom one was broken when we first noticed this in the field, and by the time we got it in the shop, the top one is too. So let's uh, get this thing lifted up and see if we can figure out if we can fix it. Alright, we got our air jack here sitting up on top of all the blocks. 20 ton air over hydraulic jack, so instead of having to pump manually, all I gotta do, hooked up to compressed air, squeeze the valve. Don't mind the furnace in the background. Remember, I said it's minus 30 outside. I'm trying to keep it workable in here. Okay, so we've got this wheel dolly underneath the wheel because unlike conventional tires that you'll find on like cars and trucks and stuff, these tires are full of fluid. Calcium chloride to be specific, which depending on its mixture can be like 16 pounds per gallon. So this tire is well over a thousand pounds in total weight. I'm not safely throwing that around by myself. I could follow me and we could be in big trouble. So we got it chained onto the wheel dolly here so I can take it off and move it around safely and just have it stand up in the corner of the shop. So we'll take that last bolt off and see if we can wiggle this sucker out of here. All right, we got uh, the tire rod off and stuff. So now you guys can see what the problem is. Okay, right, we're gonna finish getting this knuckle off of here. We've got the uh, bottom kingpin has been removed. It's a bit of a struggle. Now we have the whole weight of this is supported by the engine hoist. So we take these top three bolts out here, and then we should be able to remove this kingpin and slide the whole assembly out. Chisel and vice grips. Pins out, so now in theory, aha, we can just pull the whole thing right in. Just like that. Voila, she's apart. So now that everything's all taken apart, let's take a look at what happened. So the lower kingpin failed. You can see it's a little bit smaller around. This one is. So there's grease on it though. So not like it was a lack of greasing. So probably what happened is the lower bushing failed, which caused it to grind up the kingpin. And when the, the play in there got really, really bad and it changed the angle of the knuckle, then it started to sit on this edge of the top bushing, which took out this edge of the top bushing. So we need all new kingpins and bushings and the whole thing. This is all that's left of the top bushing. There's nothing left of the lower bushing. Obviously that kingpin is boogered. I could reuse that, but why bother have new ones? This is what a new bushing looks like. So that's pretty straightforward. Let's go take a look at the actual axle itself. So we got all the grease and metal filings and stuff taken off. The old, uh, this is where the upper bushing would sit. We got that all cleaned off. The problem, so you can see how this looks. It's got some scratches and stuff around the edge, but it's not terrible. The problem is <laughs> the bottom is pretty beat up, pretty boogered, not good. We're probably gonna end up doing some fairly sketchy things because I can actually take this bushing and put it in place without any trouble. That's not so good. Right, so rather than going with just the JB weld, we're gonna weld some of this up, die grind it down at least, and uh, reduce the amount of space in between the bushing and the wall there, because in some places it'd be a quarter inch right along here. And so we're trying to minimize the amount of space in between the bushing and the actual housing. Just make sure it can't wiggle around when we do put JB Weld in. So now comes the die grinder and grinder. Yay! Okay, so now I'm going to show you guys something really simple and easy that you can do. 
So the whole weight that this axle wants to put onto the tire ends up coming through this surface on the bottom here because of course it's pushing down, right? So when we put that bushing in here, if this surface on the bottom isn't perfectly flat, it's got some high spots or low spots, the pressure it exerts onto that bushing is not going to be even. And so we've got a, a spike in, in pressure in one little spot, it might crack that bushing and we'll start this whole process all over again. So we've got to make sure this is flat. Now, I don't have access to any super swanky, expensive, fancy machining machinery, so I do have an angle grinder. And the arbor on the angle grinder fits inside the hole for the bushing by just a little bit. And with this spinning at 10,000 RPM, if I just wiggle this around back and forth a little bit, we're going to get the surface to be actually very, very flat. Not perfect, but very, very close. Way better than I could do like this and then trying to eyeball how flat it is. So I just did that. I held it on an angle here, just like this, held it flat just with my palm so it could wiggle around uh, to the best spot, let it run for a few seconds, and lo and behold, we have a perfectly flat spot. We can hold the bushing on there, doesn't even wiggle. All right, so once you've got the grinding down, or actually while you're doing the grinding, simple and easy way to make sure that we have this surface true to this surface so we don't have our bushings kind of you know, a little bit wampus to each other. Simple degree wheel. I've checked this before, so I'm not gonna you know, wait for it to stop moving everything. We end up with like eight degrees here, eight degrees here, 10 degrees, 10 degrees. Very simple and easy to check, simple tool. I know we're not gonna be quite as precise if we use a digital one. Might be nice to get a digital uh, um, degree meter like this at some point, but that's just a simple and easy way to check to make sure that the two bushings are gonna be actually true to each other. Sure is nice having the proper tool for the job. I'm just pumping this handle over here manually. And she just slides on there, just tickety-boo. Okay, so we're getting mocked up to uh, to get everything put together. So we have our lower kingpin. We've already pressed the, the bearing insert or the bushing insert, whatever you want to call it, onto the kingpin. This is the other half of it. This is the surface that the, the whole weight of the front end of the tractor is going to sit on and, and turn. Those grooves are cut so grease can be pumped through there. Uh, make sure it'll actually get through and do its job. And so that sits on top. And there's a little bit of wiggle that you can have in it. It has a bit of play designed in it so things aren't perfect. That's okay to line up, which is good because I highly doubt that my uh, die grinding and stuff inside is going to be perfect. So it's good to have a little wiggle there. Before this goes on, we have these two ceiling washers. They are, they're not perfectly flat. And so when those go on there, the weight of the tractor, part of it's going to sit on those and create a seal. Uh, in between these pieces as they turn so the dirt doesn't get in and on the top we have the same kind of thing we got one of these washers that sits on top and uh, this is the bushing that goes into the the top of the knuckle just kind of like that it sits on there and uh, so that is how these assemblies go together the top and bottom kingpins are different so it's pretty hard to get this together the wrong way but those are all the pieces that we need to replace all right, so we got the knuckle heating with the space heater. It's only 10 degrees in Celsius in the shop, so if we want to put some JB Weld up in the bottom of here, the warmer we can have this, the better cure we're going to get. We're going to go and check the kingpins outside so that uh, they get nice and cold, because if we have to put them in and out of the knuckle here uh, a few times during assembly, if these are really freaking cold and this is warm, they'll uh, come, they'll go together and come apart a lot easier. We got uh, new grease circs put on both kingpins. So we're going to go in for a quick breakfast and come back out and should be able to slap this sucker together. All right, I think we got everything about as ready as we can be. I'm fully fueled. I am coffeeed. I am orange juiced and egged and whatever else I had for breakfast, second breakfast. And we got uh, the knuckles all warm. The parts are all cold. Everything's lined up and clean. Let's uh, put this thing back together. All right, my phone does uh, funny things with... Uh, Time lapse, it seems like. So, anyhow, we got this all on here. We hung it off the engine hoist. We put the top kingpin in first with its ceiling washer in there. And then we hung the bottom and put the bottom one in. We've got one ceiling washer in there. Didn't have space for two. We went and checked the other side to make sure we've got our gap in the bottom. It's pretty similar. Uh, she's nice and tight to turn, which means it's got a bit of preload on it, which I do believe is good. Because you wouldn't want that to be super loose because that means it'll get itself play in short order. So we just got to put uh, the steering arm back on and get the tire back on and get this thing sitting on the tire. And that way that uh, JB Weld, that epoxy stuff can uh, cure in with that bushing in the right place. Okay, let's get this tire on here. It's pretty heavy, so this could be fun. A smart person would have marked the very top of this uh, hub when the tour took it off 
because uh, the way the tractor is set up, I can't really turn this, so I may have to turn the tire to get the lugs to line up. So if I'd have been smart, I'd have marked the top, so when I put it back together, I could have rotated the axle and had this in the right orientation. Shouldn't have gone far because, of course, I hung it by the hub and this. It shouldn't have turned far, but we'll see. Deceptively heavy. It's probably close to a thousand pounds. Kid you not, it's got probably 70 gallons of uh, 16 pounds per gallon of calcium chloride in it, plus the weight of the tire and rim itself. completes that repair. There's more to be done yet, but that'll have to wait for some other time. So as always, thanks for watching.